Welcome to the Professional Development Workshop presented by the Delta Research and Education Foundation, popularly known by the acronym DREF. This year, DREF is presenting in collaboration with Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I am Dr. Candace Boyd, and I have the pleasure of serving as the workshop moderator. Our topic is one that hits home for all of us. The topic is self-care. The DREF DST workshop presentation is entitled, Pouring from a Full Picture, Self-Care, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Before we hear from our dynamic presenters on ways to practice self-care in our lives, I would like to share some welcome remarks from the president of the DREF Board of Directors, Ms. Carolyn E. Lewis of New Orleans, Louisiana. On behalf of the DREF Board of Directors, welcome to this most important professional development workshop that addresses self-care. Nothing is more important than taking care of ourselves and making oneself a priority. Being in attendance today for our session is a step in the right direction for realigning your personal paths toward health and wellness. Thank you for being an audience participant and may you grasp the many pearls of wisdom in this session. I would also like to extend our devoted appreciation to Dr. Candace Boyd, the session moderator, our presenters, Dr. Markeisha Henderson and Dr. Deborah Burn Burnell, and offer acknowledgement to our DREF program director, Deborah Peaks Coleman for coordinating today's workshop. DREF is grateful for the continuous collaborative partnership that it has with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and the American Federation of Teachers. Our foundation is most appreciative to be a facilitator in the professional development series once again this year. Welcome and thank you all. Please enjoy the session. All right, so let's get started. Many of us have realized that our greatest resource, our greatest asset in the world is our health. True statement, whether proven by empirical data or simply a heartfelt notion. We need a healthy lifestyle to get us wherever we need to go and to do whatever has to be done in our lives. And the road to health and wellness begins with you, with me, with us. It begins with taking care of ourselves so that we are prepared to take care of our life's demands and desires. I have to be intentional about taking care of myself. Things can get pretty hectic and overwhelming as I navigate my full-time career as a meteorologist, as well as a professor, as a volunteer in my Delta chapter, and in my community mentoring youth in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, also known as STEM activities, as well as caring for my two young children. As a DREF volunteer, I serve as an equity warrior with the Delta Teacher Efficacy Campaign, known as DTEC, and the Delta Teachers Advocating to Lead Great Change, TAG program. So as a DTEC TAG equity warrior, I am a part of a team that fights to achieve equity in education for African-American students. I would like to give a special shout out to all of the educators in our audience today and encourage them to be warriors for their health and wellness so that they will pour from a full picture during this school year. We have two dynamic Delta ladies who are going to share strategies on how we can be intentional 
about pouring from a full pitcher, outlining how we can achieve self-care by addressing the interconnected elements of our mind, body, and spirit. Our health and wellness needs the holistic approach to care for our physical health, our mental health, and our spiritual well being. In recent media coverage, we have seen several celebrity figures take charge of their wellness, particularly their mental health, expressing that some aspects of it were not healthy and whole, and that they needed to take time and pause to take care of it. They were taking care of their mental health. From Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, to tennis champion, Naomi Osaka, to Olympic gymnast champion, Simone Biles. These young women are applauded for making their self-care their top priority. Self-care encourages us to employ everyday habits and lifestyle practices that will result in leading healthy lifestyles. A healthy lifestyle will enable us to pour from a full pitcher, giving us an optimal experience to pour into others as we care for our families, lead our professional lives, volunteer in our communities, and pursue rewarding endeavors. Nothing can be, pull, nothing can be poured from an empty container and not much can be poured from a container that's half filled. So today, let's hear from our presenters on how you can fill your pitcher by practicing self-care and may your cup runneth over. Our first presenter joins us from the Atlanta, Georgia metro area. Dr. Markeisha McWilliams Henderson is the chairperson of the Physical and Mental Health Subcommittee of the National Program Planning and Development Committee of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. In this national volunteer leadership role with the sorority, she has been instrumental in developing and implementing the signature program known as Delta Care, a self-care health and wellness initiative. In January of 2020, Dr. Henderson became the first African American Director of Athletics at Agnes Scott College, a women's liberal arts college in Decatur, Georgia. She is responsible for campus-wide wellness initiatives for the student body including physical education, recreation, and intramurals. This year, she celebrates her 25th year as a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I am so pleased to introduce to you, Dr. Markeisha McWilliams Henderson. Thank you, Dr. Boyd, for that introduction, and welcome to all who have logged on to join us today. Um, Delta Care is a wellness initiative of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority that was formed out of a call to action. Um, we realize that we serve in so many capacities, um, and the community relies on us for a lot of things, and it's difficult, especially coming off of this pandemic, um, to realize all of the responsibilities that we have and still find time for ourselves and to put ourselves first. We also realize that when we do not endeavor to preserve our own health, it makes it even more challenging to serve the community that needs us. So before I begin, um, I want to share with you um, a lot of components of Delta Care that can be applicable to anyone, not just members of our sorority, that give us an opportunity to put ourselves on our list. But if you're like me, and as Dr. Boyd also mentioned in her remarks, we wear multiple hats. We have a lot going on and we have um, a lot of domains in which um, require our attention. But I'm gonna ask just for this moment, just for this presentation, that you be where your feet are. As you are here, I know sometimes it's tempting on sessions like these. We've all been Zoom masters of multitasking and our mind goes in different directions and we're worried about what we're cooking for dinner tonight and we're worried about what's gonna happen tomorrow. If you will please indulge us for the next few minutes to just be where your feet are, we are going to share some very helpful tips to you where you can prioritize your own self-care. So let me tell you a little bit about the Delta Care Initiative. As I mentioned, it was a call to action for our members 
that serve the communities, that we take a holistic approach to our own wellness and our sisterhood. How can we be there for others if we are not well ourselves? And so we challenged our membership to practice the ethic of self-care through three components, physical health, emotional health, and awareness and advocacy for their well-being. And that encompasses the um, principles of self-care. So women are, especially Delta women, are statistical leaders. Um, we're the first to do that, and we are the top people on our jobs. But unfortunately, we also lead the country in some of the most deadly, uh, we lead the statistics in some of the most deadly diseases in our, in our um, communities. We lead our white and Latina counterparts in heart disease. More Black women die of stroke than our white counterparts. Black women are diagnosed um, higher than uh, the diagnosis rate for diabetes is higher in our communities than they are in white communities. We have a one in nine chance of getting breast cancer. We're more likely to die of cervical cancer. It goes on and on and on. These are not categories in which we want to be leaders. And because of these statistics, we made a call to action to women to start taking better care of themselves and to take charge of their well being. Also, from a mental and emotional standpoint, we are 20% more likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population. Depression, ADHD, and PTSD, according to Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health. So the question is, what are we going to do about prioritizing ourselves? How do we get ourselves off of this statistical leaderboard? This is not one area where we want to be known. And so there are certain things, it's not that we do this intentionally, but there are certain things that occur that prevent us from being our best self. Some of the barriers to self-care is just the stigma in our community. Um, we are known to, uh, especially Black women are known to take in charge and to being the leaders in our communities, in our household. That expectation is on us to always be the one to save America sometimes, <laughs> as we well know. And then there's this myth of the superwoman. We like to say Black girl magic. And I believe we do have Black girl magic. But sometimes we forget it's not actual magic. It's just a figure of speech. There's this myth that is placed on us as super women and that um, it's, a, it's a reputation that we have to live up to that we can somehow balance all of these plates at the same time when we are human. We are mortal, you know, and there's really no magic about it. We just work really hard and we get things done. And sometimes we sacrifice ourselves. We don't take the time to focus on ourselves. We um, make time for everything else. But when it's time for us to um, prioritize our own self-care, we make a lot of excuses for why we don't. And sometimes we feel guilty when we take time for ourselves, which is also not a good habit to have. And then some of us grew up in households or have a stigma that um, when we take care of our mental health, that it, it's a sign of weakness. And we don't seem to put the same emphasis and priority on our physical well being as we do for our mental well being. Specifically in our helping professions, for example, our teachers, our healthcare workers, first responders, military, et cetera, we are always in a domain where other needs, other people's needs are a priority. And so those of us that are working in helping professions, um, I, I'm in education, for example, it's important for us more than ever to put ourselves on that list. Um, especially coming out of a pandemic, we uh, were charged in, in ways that were unprecedented to show up for other people, to figure out things and to solve problems in our community. But where are you on the list when you need to take care of others? Where is your own um, self-care? And so we have to go back to what our flight attendants tell us when we board these planes. Put on your own mask first before helping others. If we are not making sure that our picture remains full, how can we pour into our communities? How can we help others? So in Delta Care, we share the ABCs of self-care. Those ABCs are awareness, balance, which also encompasses boundaries and connectedness. Let's start with awareness. 
in order to really be intentional about our self-care, we first have to acknowledge that it is necessary, that we are not designed, we are not capable of going 24 seven. We get the same 24 hours a day, the same seven days a week as everyone else gets. It's important number one, to acknowledge that your body needs rest. You need to break um, both physically and mentally. Next slide, please. Number two, we need to recognize when a break needs to occur. Listen to your body. When you're tired, you have to make it a point to go ahead and get the rest. I know some of us like to burn the candle at both ends and burn the midnight oil, but it's important that we recognize when a break needs to occur and take those breaks. We also need to identify what activities are for you. Be aware of those things that give you joy and find time to do those types of activities. If you enjoy painting and drawing, don't put yourself last on the list. Schedule those things um, that are important to you and realize that those things are just a priority as the needs of other people. The B in the ABCs of self-care represents balance and boundaries. Here are some examples of ways that you can do that. One, establish clear work and uh, making sure that um, your work, you have a designated beginning and end time to your work day. When it's time to unplug, do so. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to not answer the phone on the first ring and send some people to voicemail and come back to it later. When you take a day off, it truly should be a day off. Don't try to fit in other things during your vacation time, but really take that time for yourself. Use your vacation time. Americans especially are guilty of giving away their vacation time at the end of year. If you get two weeks paid vacation, do your best to schedule time and to use that. Be realistic in establishing your to-do list every day. Don't put so much on yourself. I have started actually transforming my to-do list to a must-do list. Sure, there are things that I must do every day um, on this to-do list, and it could be infinite. But there are certain things that I have to get done every day and I focus on those must do's and not try to conquer the never ending to do list. And always remember, no is a complete sentence. Monitor your commitments and don't be afraid to share with people when you feel that you're overwhelmed and cannot commit. So also in Delta Care, we um, focus on the C, which is connectedness. That connectedness became increasingly important during the pandemic when we were isolating and quarantining during the time. Social connections are very important. So as we get back into the regular swing of things outside of the pandemic, it's important to surround yourself with people who um, feed into you. I know I've missed a lot of my friends and doing girl trips and things of that nature. And hopefully we can get back to those activities really soon. Spiritual connectedness being at one and at peace, whatever your religious um, faith may be, but having that spiritual grounding and that time for yourself is so critically important, connecting to those things that are higher than yourself, meditation, religious practices, and those things are important to you should always find time in that space. And then making sure that we have healthy and mature relationships. Surround yourself with people who feed into you and distance yourself from people who um, bring negativity into your space. It's important that those um, connections are made, but sometimes there are some people and situations we need to disconnect ourselves from. And so sometimes to do this, we may need a little help. And so with the Delta Care Initiative, we charge our membership to take inventory of our wellness behaviors. And these will be revisited later on. But we ask each person, each individual, to start their journey by taking an inventory of the healthy habits you want to stop, start, and continue. And we're going to ask you to um, think about the, that later in the presentation. And finally, um, one of our mantra through the Delta Care Initiative was when deltas are well, all is well. Keeping in mind that we have families our coworkers, our employees, our community, um, the PTA board, all of these people depend on us. And because of the role that we play in society, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to the people that we love to prioritize our own self-care because when we are well, 
we can pour into others. And the same is true whether you are Delta or not. If you take care of yourself, if you prioritize your own well-being, there is more of you to give. And there, there, the, the response to that and the, and the work that you're doing triples and magnifies tenfold into our communities. I believe that um, when we all are of sound mind, of sound body and in the sound spirit, we give ourselves a lot more room to take care of the things that we need to take care of and we can march forward in our agenda. So I hope that some of the strategies that we use in Delta Care are applicable to you. And I, um, this ends my portion of the presentation and I'll turn it back to Dr. Boyd um, for the second half of this presentation where you'll get some more practical steps for your well-being. Thank you so much. That was really enlightening and I appreciate all of those wonderful uh, suggestions that you offered. So now let's move to our next presenter, Dr. Deborah Burnell. So today we're focusing on a holistic approach of addressing our mind, body, and spirit to achieve optimal self-care. Our next presenter is regarded as a whole health consultant. Dr. Deborah Burnell is a medical doctor who is a board certified psychiatrist. She is also a Reiki and color puncture practitioner who has done extensive training in meditation, traditional Chinese medicine, as well as Native American and traditional African healing practices. She was a solo outpatient practitioner for 22 years in Washington, DC, before assuming her current position as site director as at Wellspan Physiatry in York, Pennsylvania. Her integrated holistic health philosophy empowers patients in lifestyle changes and taking personal responsibility for their health, well being, and healing process. Dr. Burnell is an author yoga and North African dance instructor and is a 45 year member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I now present to you, Dr. Deborah Burnell. Thank you, Dr. Boyd for that fabulous introduction. I am a physiatrist, um, not a psychiatrist, although I tend to need both of those skills to work with my uh, chronic pain patients. So I'm going to keep my uh, uh, lab coat on for a couple minutes to talk to you as a physician about getting your regular health checkups and screening. During this pandemic, a lot of us put things off. Uh, so I urge you to not put things off because uh, the earlier we find out any abnormalities, the easier it is for us to guide you quickly back to wellness. So my health recommendations, I'll give you the uh, quick and dirty list. First of all, if you're smoking, please try to stop. Um, those toxins, you know, aren't good for you. And one of the easiest things that my patients have been able to do and have found uh, helpful for smoking cessation is to do some breathing techniques. Often people are triggered to use a cigarette because they're stressed out. So there's an app you can download for free called 478 Breathing. In for four, hold for seven, and out for a count of eight. And it takes you through four cycles of that. And that app can be very uh, helpful when you're triggered and under stress, whether you smoke or not. I suggest you download it and check it out. Drinking plenty of water, eating your nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day, that's four and a half cups, will fill you up with all the 
soluble and insoluble fiber so that you don't have room for all those snacks that you shouldn't be taking in, maintaining a healthy body weight, getting regular exercise, getting restful, restorative, and rejuvenating sleep every day is very important for us to maintain our health. And so why don't we? Usually because of that stress we were talking about, because of that superwoman syndrome where we're doing so much and not taking time to take care of ourselves. So stress is a factor in all disease processes. And when you have a disease and you're under stress, it blocks your healing process. It doesn't allow us to really heal if our body isn't in that relaxed state. So stress really puts us at a disadvantage. So how best to work with stress? Definitely take a breath. If you're under a stressful condition, if you're finding yourself getting uh, overheated, um, uh, out of sorts, instead of reacting to your circumstance, if you can just take a few minutes, even if it's just one breath, before you answer that question that you might react to instead of respond, it will really help decrease your stress level overall because then we get into a feeling of guilt and unforgiveness of ourselves if we react and lash out when we're really trying to be helpful and respond. And at the end of this presentation, we'll take some time to learn some deep breathing skills. One of the things I want you to do is watch a baby breathe. When you look at a baby breathe, their stomachs expand as they inhale. And as they exhale, their stomachs come in. And as we get older, we unlearn the natural way of breathing and we start breathing up here. We're pulling our necks and shoulders. And then we wonder why it feels like the weight of the world is still on our shoulders because our breathing has caused so much tension in these muscles that we can't relax. So it's important as we will learn later on and do our deep breathing that we incorporate our abdominal muscles to pull down our diaphragm. And we'll also talk about incorporating our pelvic floor muscles to keep those strong. Next, we want to talk about drinking our eight glasses of water a day. I'm glad I started talking about those pelvic floor muscles because this is the excuse that I get when I say you should be drinking eight glasses of water a day. Uh, people tell me, I'll be in the bathroom all day long. So, um, I encourage them to slowly increase their water in intake and slowly strengthen the muscles in your pelvic floor. The muscles in your pelvic floor between your sit bones, your pubic bone, and your tailbone are what strengthen you at, when you're drinking water so that you won't feel that need to rush and go to the bathroom. And over time, you can build up the amount of water that you can hold in your bladder 
uh, before you have to use the bathroom. But you should be going to the bathroom regularly about five times a day. Next slide. So you are what you eat. I talked about nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. That's four and a half cups. And you want it to be like this picture, all colors, all tastes, all flavors, so that you get the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals that you need for your body's healing process that is going to be happening while you sleep and for your digestion. So your elimination comes from the wonderful fiber, soluble and insoluble fibers that you're taking in from your nutrition. So take some time for what I call food forethought. You are what you eat, so plan your meals. Um, most people make the mistake in the grocery store, not at home, because if you pick it up at the grocery store and it's at home, you're gonna eat it. So go to the grocery store thoughtful about what you're gonna prepare and bring that home. Try to go around the outside of the grocery store and get your fresh fruits and vegetables, your proteins, all the good nutrition and try to avoid the middle of the store where they have processed foods and all those additives, preservatives that can only cause harm to your body. I recommend you avoid any food that's fast, easy, cheap, or fake. Fast food, you want to prepare your own food quickly, but don't keep stopping at the fast food store. Don't get quick processed food that you put in a microwave. Don't prepare ramen noodles with all the salt that's going to give you blood pressure problems. Avoid the additives, preservatives, artificial colors, sweeteners, flavors, because your body doesn't know what to do with those artificial things. So keep food forethought in your mind. So what do you do for respite? What do you enjoy? I recommend if you exercise, do something that you love. Don't force yourself to do something because other people are doing that. Find what you can do. And unfortunately, I don't have a swimming pool at home or <laughs> uh, a... Um, ocean outside my door. So um, this is a leisure activity I can only enjoy part of the year. So you have to decide, okay, this works for summer. What works for fall? What works for winter? What works for spring? Make sure you're changing your exercise program as you need to. And the other thing, water gives me comfort, respite. I listen to ocean sounds when I want to relax. I get in a warm bathtub with Epsom salt, baking soda. That one cup of Epsom salt, one cup of baking soda helps detox your body and relax your muscles. I put a few candles out some rose petals, a little lavender oil. That is my time. If I can take 20 to 30 minutes before I go to sleep for my little respite, I do that. Next, we wanna make sure we get support 
for whatever activities we try to do. Make sure you share in a safe place. Don't talk about what you're doing around naysayers. Talk to other people that will support you. Work in a group or get a buddy or let other people inspire you. Every year I used to do something called Race for the Race for a fundraiser for the school and it was dedicated to Harriet Tubman making that run from the south to the north and the Underground Railroad. That was a very important um, influence for me. It was an inspiration to remember that journey so that the little running I was doing was nothing compared to what my ancestors had done and it kept me uplifted. So at the end of the day, it really helps in your preparation to go to sleep, to take time to reflect and be grateful. If we go to sleep troubled without processing those things that we've been through during the day that might have unsettled us or stressed us, we'll just toss and turn at night. And even though we're in bed for eight hours, we're not getting that restful, restorative, rejuvenating sleep. So I find it helpful to take time to reflect on that day, forgive myself and others for anything that didn't work out the way I wanted to, pledge to move forward in a more positive direction, and be grateful for the wonderful things that happened and go to, to bed with that gratitude in mind and starting with some deep breathing to allow myself to relax. Because this is how I want to sleep, like a baby. And it's good to detach from all the electronics, you know, take time to set the stage for your sleep. So now we really want to take some time for you personally to reflect on the three things that we asked you to do as a goal for this presentation. So just in 30 seconds, what are you planning to start? What are you planning to stop? And what are you planning to continue in your healthy habits for self-care in your life? And I allow you to take some time, write it in the chat right now, share with others at this program, the kinds of things that you're going to stop, start, and continue in order to take charge of your life. Well, I'm definitely going to uh, continue with my respite in my bath. I'm going to um, definitely take time uh, to draw inspiration from others. And I definitely want to share this breathing technique with you. So let's practice together. It helps put your hand on your chest and on your belly. As you take a deep breath in through your nose, try to round your belly out push it out, and then that will bring your diaphragm down. And then as you exhale, squeeze in your belly, squeeze in and up on your pelvic floor between your pubic bone, your tailbone, and your sit bone. All the air out. 
Inhale, your stomach comes up and your chest and exhale. Your chest falls, your stomach comes in, your pelvis comes up. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So I encourage you to practice your deep breathing regularly. Take time to smell the flowers and take care of yourself every day. Thank you so much, Dr. Burnell. It has been our extreme pleasure to present the professional development workshop focusing on self-care. May you earnestly consider what lifestyle practices you will stop, start, and continue to achieve. Remember, you have the ability to pour from a full pitcher as you realize self-care for your mind, body, and spirit. Our presenters and our draft staff have prepared a resource list for you on the topic of self-care. Please retrieve it from the DREF website or you can retrieve it in the link in the chat. On behalf of the Delta Research and Education Foundation of Delta Sigma Theta and Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, we thank you for being a part of today's audience. In closing, I encourage you to embrace the bold as you take the necessary steps to take care of yourself. I offer excerpts from the poem entitled, Embrace the Bold by Maryland poet, Gilly Haynes. Sidestep all hesitation, go ahead, embrace the bold. There's energy in boldness. It moves your spirit and your feet. Yes, movement is required. You won't find it in your seat. There's fierceness with new action and you'll know you'll never cease until you're sure you're in your purpose with a maximum increase. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, embrace the bold.